And this is the paper with the print on it that we're talking about first. See, every year we do a burning bowl celebration. And every year I ask, I go within and ask, what ought to be thought, what ought to be done by me, what ought to be said by me, that I can support the whole community. Because I want to do this for myself, so I might as well take you guys along for the ride. Doesn't that make sense? Yep. And it seems to me that there are two, three big spots in our lives where we are holding out on the love for ourselves. Where we are not embracing, we're only, we're not embracing God as a reality. We're only embracing God as an idea. And we want to embrace God and thus embrace ourselves as a reality. And that all comes down to our forgiveness. And forgiveness comes, or unforgiveness comes in so many categories. It comes in my grievances, you know, my hostility, my, my humiliation, my hatred of myself that leads to hatred of you, that leads to, you, you know, stuff like that. It also, it comes in the way of debt. You know, I owe somebody, I owe somebody an apology, somebody owes me an apology, I owe money, they owe me money, things like that. It comes in not seeing clearly or not seeing correctly. See, I look at you guys and instantly I create a story about you. You guys look at me, you create a story about me. And when the story starts, seeing correctly ends. As soon as I have an opinion, the story has started and the seeing correctly has ended. Now, so I like a lot of my stories, they're fun, but they don't give me freedom because you know what happens if I create a story about you that I like, you go and change on me <laughs> and screw up my story. And so, now suddenly, I've got a story about you that I don't like. I go and do something to change your story about me. Suddenly, you don't like me. And you don't like yourself. See, this is why I have said for years, we've got to get rid of the word bad. Because bad is an inaccurate description of life. So the you see that column on the left of your page, which says the people I need to forgive or the people I need to <laughs> see correctly. Everyone here, put your name top of that list. You're the first one that you need to see correctly. Because once you see yourself correctly, you're gonna see everybody else correctly. Because you're not gonna need anybody else to be different than they are. So once you see what you are, who you are, Okay, and then you'll see the second column there is the, the people that I would like to have forgive me. Those who I have, it feels as if maybe they perceive me incorrectly, that they're not seeing anybody who I feel I have offended in any way. You might need to put yourself on that list too. Mm. Uh, there. And then the bottom part of the page <coughs> is the adjectives. If you look at that bottom half, it's all those adjectives that we that we use to inaccurately describe our lives. Like, oh, I just want to kill myself. Nobody wants to kill themselves. They want to get out of this situation in the way they perceive it. Words like broke, I'm broke. No, I'm not broke, I just don't see my money. Words like I hate that, or that, or you know, there's all sorts of words. Uh, that's bad, that's terrible. Those are, those are words that do not accurately describe. Now, an accurate word would be, that's hard. Well, that's re it's hard to be me today. It's hard to think correctly today. That's very different than this was a terrible day. It's easy to be me. That's a bit more accurate. The days that, that we call good, as if there's a bad day. See, in the promises of God, there are no bad days. But God does not promise there's no hard days. But in the promises of God, there are no bad days. There are no bad people in the promises of God. Because you see, either God is or God isn't. And so, what it is is that we have been living in an illusion. We've been living in an illusion of ourselves. It's as if we put ourselves on a stage and we're acting out a play all the time. And we keep changing, you know, we go from scene to scene to scene. We do different lighting, different effects. 
and we're labeling every bit of it. In this clean slate today, what I'm inviting us all to do, and I've already written down mine, is in this clean slate, is take away the meaning. That's what you're doing today on this white piece of paper here. You're putting down the names of people or institutions or events, places in your past. Because I don't care if it's presidential <laughs> leaders, current, or back to George Washington, or the kings of old, whatever it is. Wherever you have a grievance, wherever you're seeing less than God, because you want to see God present in everything and everyone. I don't care that your ego is wants to come in and say, oh no, but not this one. Don't let there be an exception to God. That's what Jesus' message was, that there's no exception to God. I want to see my persecutors clearly. I'm willing to see these people who think they're killing me as they are and realize death, there is no death. And so therefore, they cannot actually be killing me. So do not judge this by how you see it. What we're going to do today is say goodbye. We're saying goodbye to our illusions. We're saying goodbye to the, the definitions that we have used to maintain our resentments, our grievances, our fear, our guilt, our humiliation. We're saying goodbye. We're saying goodbye to this stuff. Let me assure you, tomorrow you can pick up new ones. <laughs> I'm not, but today, let's clean the slate. Let's just clean the slate. And that clean slate may seem like anathema to you. This may scare you like nothing else. That's a, a, but but, but th they're going to get away with it. But they're, not if you see it correctly. If you see what they are, as I said here before, I had a friend a few years ago, I was thinking about, and it occurred to me, he was just doing what he thought was the right thing to do at the time. Well, I could forgive that. It was painful to me when it was happening. But then I realized, oh, well, I was just doing the only thing, the thing I thought was the right thing to do at the time. And you must understand, not necessarily the morally right thing, but the, thing, the right thing to do to feel how I wanted to feel. That's all I was doing, and that's all that your persecutors are even doing now. They're just saying and doing the right thing they think to do right now to be safe, to be secure, because they have forgotten that they are good. They have forgotten they are not separate from God. They have forgotten they're not separate from you and me. I am willing to admit this time, this week at least three, or all but maybe three of you, forgot at least five times that you are not separate from God or anyone else. Most of us, when we drive, find that is a great opportunity to forget. <laughs> With our spouses, is that, oh, that's a wonderful time to forget that, uh, that you are uh, not separate. <laughs> it's, but now, we, today, we want to take this as an opportunity to remember. Take New Year's Day, 2012, as the day we are choosing to remember, I am one with God. And if I am one with God, then I've got to be one with my brothers and my sisters. It can't be I'm one with God and separate from my brothers and my sisters. And so therefore, my definitions, the meaning I give to stuff, can't be true. The, and how, how do you know the difference? Well, I'll tell you how you know the difference. If what you think about another could change, then it's not true. It's just an opinion. That's all it is. Whatever is changeable is an illusion. Whatever is unchangeable is real. Of course, the miracles, I think it's lesson 52, says reality is never frightening. Well, what's the logical conclusion then? What's frightening isn't real. Whatever I'm afraid of isn't real. And so therefore, that takes some of the sting out, some of the buzz from what I'm afraid of if I know it's not real. So therefore, lack. Lack is an illusion, wouldn't you say? Because if all of a sudden you had a realization of oneness or of wholeness, you would, you would know, oh, there's no lack here today. If I saw a pile of cash, I might not be perceiving lack. If I saw this or that or perceived or somebody gave me a hug, I, not, I might not be perceiving lack. We're saying goodbye to the stage today. 
we're saying goodbye for just for today of our blatant embracing of personality. Our own and others. We're, we're, we're saying goodbye to our specialness today. And I, when I say specialness, because you see, we use our, our, our problems for our, to maintain our specialness more than we do our loveliness. Because if, if we're a light amongst lights, then where's the specialness? If you read The Little Soul in the Sun, and the little soul says, so he says to God, I want to be special. And God says, well, how would you be special? He says, I want to be the light, but look around you. There's nothing but lights. There's just nothing but lights. And finally they settle on forgiveness. The little soul will be, friend, will, will be special by way of forgiveness. And what happens? A friendly soul comes along and gives him an opportunity to learn forgiveness. A friendly soul came along and offered you an opportunity to learn forgiveness. How about that? How about that? So write down some names. Those of you who haven't already, go ahead. Write down some names and those columns. Write down some events. I don't care if it's from when you were three. If you were adopted and you're mad at the people who gave you up, and, and, and put them down. Anywhere you've ever experienced, anywhere you need to see completely clearly of the truth. Anywhere where you think about a situation, an event, or anything where you don't experience peace, get it down on the paper. It's not that you have to have already forgiven. It's that you're becoming willing to. God already has it figured out how to forgive. God, Spirit, already has it figured out. You're not going to figure it out. You're expressing your willingness. That's all. It is already done in the invisible realm. What a relief. I just have to declare my willingness. <coughs> Some of you may have a lot of names. Some of you may not have hardly any. Doesn't matter, there's no judgment here. You can do this process again day after day after day. In fact, I recommend it. Names will come to you later. Events, situations, dates. In the top two columns, fill them in. And the bottom column, what expressions are you using that don't accurately describe your life? I'm old, I'm tired, I'm sick and tired, I'm poor. I'm stupid, I'm ugly. What do you see in the mirror that you don't get peace from? Take your judgment away from fat. Take your judgment away from thin. Anywhere that you don't accurately describe your life. And let me tell you, how you if you're not asking spirit for the truth about the situation, you're probably not accurately describing it. Any of your descriptions of health <laughs> do not describe yourself as sick, as lonely. These are opinions based on false meaning. Any arguments that come up doesn't matter. You put it on the paper. More will be revealed. We're looking for a clean slate today. This is an exercise. This is a wonderful, wonderful exercise. And save the blank piece of paper for when we come back up. <coughs> Once you have written on the paper, fold it up, don't Tighten it, it won't burn as easily. <laughs> Hold it up gently and write, thank you. On the outside, write thank you. Give thanks now for all the awakening. Give thanks now for every opportunity you've had. To, to every reminder, every individual that's part of the forgiveness process is gratitude. To participate in an exercise like this. Fire is cleansing. Fire is a very cleansing quality. It burns away 
what and, and, and make something that used to seem like it existed into nothing. It takes it and just burns it into nothing. And now, this next part of, of, the, of the process is in the admitting of our longing. Really admitting. You know, we cleaned away, so now we're open to recognizing what it is. We long, we long connection. We long for connection. Assurance. We have been longing for it our whole life, but it's an unconditional connection that we want. We have longed for a personal relationship with God as well as a metaphysical relation to God. We have longed to feel God's arms around us while knowing that God is completely impersonal. We want personal and impersonal all at the same time. We want to know the good that, of God that is for me is for you. We want to know, whether you know this or not, we want to know that the good of God that is for me is also for my worst enemy. Or my best enemy, however you like to look at it. I want to know. I long to know that any thoughts I've ever had that are unkind about another human being aren't true. I long to know that all the gossip, criticism, and complaining I have done have been about nothing. I want to know that. And so we always, uh, every year we write a letter. In past years we've written a letter, oh, I'm going to get this, I'm going to get this. But this is about the fulfillment <laughs> of our longing. The very fulfillment of our longing. And so, that would be what I, how I am connected to the world. So right December 1st, 2012, at the top of your letter. Are you doing it or am I? <laughs> right December 1st, 2012. Because this year, what we're going to do here, those of you who have never done this, we're going to write a letter to ourselves. <clears throat> and you're going to put it in the envelope that we have provided. And you're going to put your address on it. And I'm going to keep it in my office for a year to pray or for the next 11 months. And I will pray over them. And December 1st next year, I will send them out. I will mail them to you. And there's, there's, don't start writing before I tell you what to write. Because it's not the same as it has been in the past. It's an envelope. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> Just, I, I, some envelope. people like to jump the gun. Because this is not a wish list. This is a willingness list. This is a willingness. How? The imagine it's December 12th, of two, or December 1st of 2012. How have you participated in the world? How, in what ways have you participated in love? In what ways have you participated in peace and joy? Because if you've taken away the meaning, then you have not participated by complaining about war. You have not participated by complaining about gas prices, or money, or lack, or illusions of any kind. How have you participated in seeing everyone correctly? How have you participated in seeing yourself correctly? Is there an accomplishment you've helped someone else accomplish? Who are you grateful to for them having helped you? Who has been your support team? Give thanks for your support team. Do not base that team on the meaning you had about them yesterday. Base it on the no meaning you have about them today. We're not looking to create new grievances or a new illusions. We've just said goodbye to being on the stage and we're looking to experience reality. One might think that could be scary, but who among us has tried it? Are we writing this in the past or the future? I, I have, it's, it, I it's, have the, it's the past. It started today, and no, right no. now you're reading it on December 1st, 2012. So I say, I have done this. Mm -hmm. This has already accomplished. 
How have you seen yourself as an active participant? Have you meditated this year in 2012? Meditation is an, being an active participant in the world. Do we write this letter to someone? Yourself. Yes. Dear David. Yes. Dear, dear David, I'm so glad I did this. I'm so glad world. you did this. Or I'm so glad I, I participated in, in this world. I'm so glad to see that I can now see the fruits of my spirituality. I, I'm so glad to see my longing satisfied. <laughs> And it wasn't satisfied by circumstances. It was satisfied by spirit within. It was satisfied by going within. I got answers by asking spirit. And spirit always gives the right answers. I'm so glad I proved that this year. I'm so grateful I spent the year asking spirit for the truth instead of my ego. You know, there are so many ways to look at this. But it is about having a great longing satisfied. That longing we have been trying to satisfy through each other, through money, through food, through all sorts of illusions. We've been trying to get the world to shape, to bend, to make us safe. And what we're realizing by setting down illusions is that we are safe. We've always been safe. That is Jesus' message. That is the Jesus Christ awakened message, which is, I am safe because I can't die. I am safe because sickness can change like that. It is your faith that has made you whole. Pick up your pallet and walk. Why would Jesus tell that to a man unless he knew that the power to walk was within him, the man? Not in Jesus, but in the man. Why would Jesus say, Lazarus, come forth? Unless he knew it was possible. Because that would just be a silly waste of time, wouldn't it? You're going to develop your knowing skills. Your knowing skills. That's what we're looking to develop here today. And every day, what do you know about God? It's December 1st, 2012. What do I now know about God? What do I now know about truth? What do I now know about wisdom? What do I now know about myself and the power that resides in every cell in my body? You know, we've been dreaming for so many years, however old you are is how long you've been dreaming, about a day of total freedom where I wasn't dependent on lack where I wasn't dependent on humiliation and embarrassment, where I wasn't dependent on my illusions, but that I, where I wasn't dependent on the physical world. 